Hey guys, Andy here, and today on Andy Talks Japan, I'm going to be sharing with you 10 steps on getting your student visa in Japan. Coming up. All right, I'm recording. Hey gang, Andy here. Welcome to a brand new episode of Andy Talks Japan. In today's episode, guys, I'm going to be sharing with you 10 steps on getting your student visa in Japan. Now, just a little disclaimer to begin, I am an American student, I'm also a US veteran, and I'm applying to Lakeland University, Japan. So, depending on your situation, your mileage may vary, but I'm just gonna outline the 10 steps on how I got my student visa in Japan. So, just keep that in mind. So anyway, let's begin. So step one, apply to a school out in Japan. Seems like the obvious first step, right? In my case, since I applied out to Lakeland University of Japan, there was a couple things that I needed, and as a veteran, also needed. So for my case, I needed my joint service transcript, my JST, which basically outlines all the stuff that I did when I was in the Navy. And I uh, also needed my GI Bill, COE, Certificate of Eligibility, which shows like how much time I have left on my GI Bill and stuff like that, as well as percentage of eligibility. Next thing I needed was my statement of purpose. Now, for those who don't know what that is, it's basically just an essay outlining kind of why you want to go to the school, why you want to enter into the field that you want to, and just basically allowing the school to kind of get to know you a little bit better. Then the next thing I needed was a letter of recommendation. So letter of recommendation, you can get those from either, you know, old teachers, professors, an employer, something like that. In my case, since I was in the Navy, I got one from my old LPO, which is like a, a manager in uh, civilian ease. The next thing I needed was a photocopy of my passport. And then after that, I also needed uh, official high, ch high school transcripts as well as official college transcripts. Now again, if you haven't gone to college before, you won't need the college transcripts and you'll probably need like a SAT, a ACT score or something like that. But because I'm old as heck, <laughs> I didn't need that. And after the school has received the items, they will set up a 15 to 45 minute interview. Now, I had never done interviews for a college before, so this is all pretty new to me. So basically what it is, is just a sit down interview that you have with the dean and maybe uh, some department heads and potential teachers and things like that. And it just gives them a chance to kind of get to know you. They go over your statement of purpose and your academic history and things like that. And just again, kind of get to know you and they'll ask you like job interview type questions, you know, talking about yourself, your successes, failures, what you did to overcome those failures, what you did to get the successes. You know, just stuff like that. And the interview can last between 15 to 45 minutes. So if you're not in Japan, like I was, and am currently, time of this recording, uh, they'll conduct this interview over Skype. But if you happen to be in the country, then uh, all the better. And they'll set you up with an in-person interview. Now dress code wise, uh, be sure to dress business casual. You don't want to go like full suit and stuff, but you know, just a nice button down shirt, slacks, Stuff like that. So just uh, look the part. And uh, also if you're doing this from Skype, make sure your room is tidy, your bed is made, and there's not all kinds of stuff on the walls and <laughs> things like that as well. And also make sure that there won't be any distractions. So in my case, since I live on the East Coast of America, when they conducted the interview, it was two o'clock in the morning my time. So like everybody has already gone to bed but depending on where you are in the world and when they decide to conduct the interview, or if you have like night owl roommates or whatever, just you know, make sure that they're squared away before the interview begins. Now step two, once you've been accepted, apply for a visa immediately. Now applying ASAP will give you plenty of time to submit corrections if needed, and we'll speed up the process overall. So once I got accepted, I sent in all my paperwork and all that kind of stuff for the visa right away. And many schools will allow you to apply for the visa on their own website, which in my case, since I was applying to Lakeland University of Japan, I went through their website for applying to the visa. And they basically act as a liaison between me and the Tokyo Immigration Bureau. So I just submit all the stuff that they need on their end and then they'll submit it to Tokyo Immigration and they'll take care of the rest basically. 
Now the school might have you submit some other items like photographs for the visa. I actually uh, took my visa photographs with this camera, the uh, Panasonic G85, in case you guys are wondering. And I took the picture against that wall right there, took a blank wall, took a picture, and uh, just submitted it, and they were fine with it. So just make sure, you know, obviously, it's not like uh, licenses, so you can't really smile. So you just have to have a flat, emotionless face. Now you also have to submit payment for the visa application and the school application fees. So at the time of this recording, the school application fee for Lakeland University of Japan is about 35,000 yen, which translates to about $320 American. And the visa application fee is 20,000 yen, or about 185 USD. I actually rounded up in this case because I'd rather you guys expect to pay more and not have to. And plus, changing exchange rates and stuff like that. So if you're watching this in the future, greetings. And be sure to check the exchange rates as well as fees and stuff like that for the time that you're applying to this. And then step three. After you apply for the visa, be sure to confirm with your school that your application went through and get an application number if need be. In my case, uh, since I applied to Lakeland, uh, once I submitted my visa application online, it didn't really give me a confirmation email or a number or something like that. So I had to uh, send out an email to my student liaison and he got me the number. So just for that little bit of security, knowing that your application went through and you're not just sitting there waiting for something that didn't get sent out. So definitely do that for sure. And then step four, and this is the hardest step of them all. Wait for the immigration bureau to process your visa, which can take around six to eight weeks. Now, as I always say, waiting is the hardest part. And the Tokyo Immigration Bureau is notoriously difficult to get a hold of. You can technically contact them if you are able to dial outside of America and get a hold of them on their Japanese number. But if you do that, you have to speak Japanese, know how to navigate through that. And chances are you're probably not gonna get a straight answer anyway. So yeah, you just gotta wait for it. Like I said, waiting is the hardest part. And step five. Your school might contact you ahead of time once your visa comes back approved and you'll get your COE, your Certificate of Eligibility, in the mail. Step six. Once you get your COE, your Certificate of Eligibility, you need to apply to your respective Japanese consulate by submitting your passport, your Certificate of Eligibility, along with a photocopy, the visa application form, and a two inch by two inch square photo of you glued to that application form. Depending on where you are from your nearest Japanese consulate in America, you can just go in and hand it to them in person. But if you're more than 100 miles away from your respective consulate, which for me, since I live out in North Carolina, the Japanese consulate I had to go through is in Atlanta, Georgia. And that's definitely more than 100 miles away. So since I live so far away, I was able to submit all my stuff in the mail. If you decide to submit your stuff by mail, you have to submit all the paperwork as well as a self-addressed stamped envelope for like priority mail, express, stuff like that. Basically something to where you can get a tracking number just to be on the safe side. As well as a release of liability form, which you can print out on their website. Releasing the consulate from any types of liability if your paperwork gets lost in the mail. So just keep that in mind. They're not responsible if you lose your passport and all that kind of stuff in the mail. So it's a risk, but if you don't want to drive out there, whatever, the risk you have to be willing to take. Now this application process thankfully is a lot shorter than getting your COE and it can take about two weeks altogether between mailing the stuff out, getting it back, as well as the overall processing once it's been received by the Japanese consulate. And if there are any errors in the application, the consulate will contact you for corrections so you don't have to remail everything again. In my case, I forgot to put the arrival date on the application form, so they called me up and asked me when I planned to arrive, gave them a date, and they processed everything from there. And step seven, dance a jig once you get your visa in the mail, because I sure as hell did. And step eight, after you receive your visa, then apply for plane tickets and housing. Now, if you live in a Western country, typically what they do is they apply for all that stuff ahead of time before they get their visa. But because I'm such a worrywart and wanna make absolutely positively sure everything is going according to plan, 
I waited until all my visa paperwork came back before I applied for plane tickets and housing. But if you're able to get plane tickets early, chances are they're not gonna cost as much and you'll have more seating availability and stuff like that. So if you're willing to rebook your flight in the small chance that uh, something does happen with your visa, go for it. But if you're not willing to take that risk like me, <laughs> then you'll just have to wait. And so step nine, once you arrive in Japan, you'll have to fill out a landing card form. Now this form basically just outlines a why are you here in Japan type thing and you just fill out like student and stuff like that. Now you can also fill out a form called permission to engage in activity other than that permitted by the status of residence previously granted. That's a mouthful. Also known as a work permit or an autobito form. For short. <laughs> if you want to work part-time jobs in Japan, which I personally very highly recommend you do that at the airport because they'll be able to just approve it from there. But if you decide to do it later, you'll have to wait for everything to process and it's just uh, more paperwork, longer process. So just get it done at the airport, even if you don't plan on taking a part-time job because you never know. And from there, you'll be able to get your Japanese ID card, AKA your Gaijin card, which you need to always have on you in case you get stopped by the police. And then step 10, the perfect 10. And the most important step of all is enjoy Japan. It took you this long to get there. So when you're there, enjoy it. So yeah, those are my 10 steps on how to get a student visa in Japan. If you have any questions about this process, be sure to leave them in the comments down below in the booby boops and I'll do my best to answer those questions, but keep in mind, I'm not an immigration lawyer and I don't even play one on the internet, so chances are I probably won't know the answers for a lot of specific questions, but I'll do my best to answer and at least direct you to someone who does. So anyway guys, with that said, this is the Andy San, signing for now, and as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later guys, bye.